Garnet is actually a whole group of gemstones. There are a ton of species and a ton of varieties in the Garnet group, and we're gonna talk about all of them today. I brought something in from home nice. that I wanna show you. Okay, let's take a look. We'll see if you can tell what it is. I, there is always a catch. And every time I look at it, I'm just amazed by how pretty it is. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's deeply red, but it's also got flashes of a little bit more purple in it. Good eye, good eye. Which kind of leads me to believe that I'm looking at a really big, really clean garnet. Am I right? Oh, you're right. Nice. So yeah, this is a rhodolite garnet. Nice. This particular one is a six and a half carat cut by Daryl Alexander. He's a famous lapidary. Rhodolite is more of like a trade name. Traditionally, it has to have this purplish red color. It's one of my favorite gemstones. I think it's, it's really a beautiful pretty. color. So we're going to talk about all different types of garnet on this episode. Later on, I'll tell you where this fits in. Garnets come in a bunch of different colors, oranges, greens, reds. And so we're going to talk about all of those colors today. Start with the classics. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. Look you don't look color. real. It's not as lustrous as I would expect. Yeah, it has this like it's kind like of a matte, matte finish. Yeah. So this is an almondine. This is like the classic garnet that everybody thinks of. Garnet is in the cubic crystal system along with spinel and diamond and fluorite. It's often dodecahedral, which is 12-sided, or icosatetrahedral, which is 24-sided. Yeah, the cubic crystal system is the simplest and it's the most symmetrical and it lends itself to some really nice crystal habits to look at. Are you ready for a little bit of chemistry? When am I not ready for a little <laughs> bit of chemistry? I think you're being facetious, but the garnet group is super complex. They're what's called an isomorphous series. And what happens is chemical elements can be substituted within the chemical structure fairly fluidly. And so you get a lot of different optical properties within the different garnet varieties and species because they all have slightly different chemical compositions. They really never occur purely Right. in one form. They're always combinations of each other, which again- Different ratios of me, the varieties. Exactly. Okay. This is an almondine, but probably it has some sort of pyrope, spessartine, or other type of garnet variety in it. Well, it's already complicated. So, it is complicated. <laughs> so before we move on to the other members of the garnet group, I do want to take one last look at a really special specimen of almondine. Love is it, it okay? I love it. Check that oh. out. Oh my gosh. If you Oh, it's so cold. It is cold. So you're not you don't write left-handed, do you? I don't. Okay, so you don't have you don't know the struggle of ending up with pencil lead graphite all over your hands? Are you left-handed? No, I'm just no, I was I'm a left-handed sympathizer. Yeah. <laughs> this is almondine garnet that is in graphite. It comes from Connecticut. Actually, almondine garnet is the state gemstone of Connecticut. This is amazing. What is going on here? It's in graphite. And then you'll notice all of our little chocolate sprinkles as well. Those are actually dravite, a variety of tourmaline. The graphite had to actually slowly be etched away in order to reveal all of these little nodules, which is tedious work and it's messy work. We're gonna have graphite on our hands here by the end of this. But worth it. Very worth it. They also had to remove a lot of graphite material from the bottom. Oh, Look it looks that. like the moon. It does, yeah. It comes from a mine known as the Red Embers Mine. And I would like to show you why that is. This is it. really cool. Okay. You ready? Oh my gosh, that's so pretty, so fiery. And they had to get rid of a lot of graphite just to have this effect. I call it the light bright. You'll love my magnetic personality. <laughs> oh, oh, check that out. Oh, okay, so you want to tell them what this is? It's Spessartine. Yes. Yeah. It used to be called Spessartite. So you'll see it's spelled like that, but now people call it spessartine. It looks like there's some quartz on there yeah, as well. I see smoky quartz over here. Yep. Yep, so spessartine is another species. This actually has the same base chemical composition as almondine, except manganese replaces the iron. Named after the Spessart Mountains in Bavaria, one of my favorite places in the world, it typically has this orangey or reddish orange 
color. Can we get back to the clue? Yes. The magnetic personality. So garnets are actually the most magnetic, transparent gemstones, and spessartine is the most magnetic of oh. all of the garnets. And so this is one way that you can test their identity by exposing them to a magnet. So we've got an array of stones here. One of them is a garnet. The rest are not. We've got also a nice little clump of magnets here. And we're gonna run it by this lineup and see which one is the garnet. Now let's see. Whoa! Oh. Look at that! <laughs> That's our Spessor team. What about this, this guy? guy? Yes, sir. Oh, let's see. Yeah, oh, a little I saw bit. a flinch. Yep. <laughs> Check that Love out. It. Love that. I'm the colorful one. Well, oh. now hang on a second. They're I'm all the colorful. colorful one. Oh. oh. We got a lot going on in this one. Yeah. So these are a part of the gracular garnet species. Cool. Graculars are calcium aluminum silicates, and they actually have the most colors out of any of the other species. Oh, okay. So All right, you, well then the clue makes sense then. Yeah. In the gracular species, you have varieties like hesamite garnet, which is like an orange, some people call it cinnamon stone. You have hydrogracular garnet. It can also be like a pinkish color. Well, it has savorite in it as yes, well. Yes, I love- Which is one of your favorites. Savorite is a type of grossular garnet. It's colored by vanadium, or it can be colored by chromium, similar to emerald. You'll find gems like this one that are considered mint grossular. Ah, uh, instead which, of savorite. Instead of savorite. Okay. There are some people who say if it's colored by iron, it should be considered mint okay. grossular, and if it's colored by chromium or vanadium, it should be considered savorite. But generally, it's gonna be more about like the saturation of the green. And, I see. Uh, the tone it's the difference saturation. between like spearmint and sour apple. Yes. So savorite, a really, really fun stone, one of my favorites. And then you have it in Matrix here. So you have this whole vein of yeah. savorite. Yeah, oh, it wraps all the way around. That's pretty cool. Let's talk about hesonite. You've sure. got the hesonite over there. Yeah. I think hesonite is a super cool gemstone. It's a lovely color. Yeah, it's very pretty. It might remind you of spessartine. It's also colored by manganese, but in this case, the manganese is a trace element in purity, whereas for spessartine, it's an essential component to its chemical composition. Hesonite garnet has a characteristic inclusion when you look inside a hesonite, and it takes a little bit of practice, it has this kind of swirly appearance. Some people call it a scotch and water effect. It's caused by tiny, tiny crystals all kind of like swirled together, and it creates this swirled, treacly, scotch and water kind of effect. Sounds delicious. Fun fact, most of the hesonite uh, that you see actually comes from Sri Lanka, which is just another list to the accolades that that yeah. little area has. The island of gems. <sighs> People say I'm the brightest. Whoa. Another. Whoa, we got a lot. Christmas present. A medley. So what we have here is our next species du jour, andradite garnet. Andradite is the most lustrous of garnets. It's a calcium iron silicate. One of the most popular varieties within the andradite species is demantoid garnet, which was originally found in the Ural Mountains in Russia. It's known for its high dispersion value, even more than diamond, actually. And so the fire that comes out of this is really prized. The name demantoid roughly translates to diamond-like. It makes sense because it's very diamond-like in its dispersion and in its luster. Well, you were talking about diagnostic inclusions earlier, and the list continues because demantoid garnet is known for its horsetail inclusions. And those are inclusions of... An forget, asbestos material. That is like the cutest thing. It's crazy. I, love I that. cannot believe that it just popped out like that. There was no fashioning to this. This is how no. these crystals... No, it form. forms that way. This variety of garnet, demantoid, is one of the most valuable and rare gemstones in the entire world. Yeah, it's price per carat is very high. The green color comes from the trace element chromium. That is a really nice display piece. You could guess that that's demantoid based on that luster. 
We've also got a highly, highly lustrous melanite over here. Yeah, so melanite is this like dark black. But it can also be a very dark red as well. And it actually gets its color from titanium replacing uh, iron in this case. So have you ever seen a rainbow androdite garnet? I have not. What you have here are layers of androdite and grossular garnet. So light goes in and it reflects and then it interferes and then you have this rainbow of colors. It's really cool. It sounds like a similar effect to Labrador essence. Yeah. You have to be really careful because you can actually polish the iridescence off of these, which makes sense oh, because right. it has the different layers. And so if you take off the you strip the layers away, yeah. then the effect is going to go away. Yeah. Okay, very so cool. must be careful. You won't see me out as much as the rest of my family. It's an introverted type. Oh, oh pretty. look at you. Love I mean, immediately that. it looks like a really tiny little shrunk down diaptase or something. Yeah, it does. So I'm going to take a swing and say that's uveravite. Uveravite is a calcium chromium silicate. You know, on this channel, we talk a lot about allochromatic gemstones and mm -hmm. idiochromatic gemstones. Allochromatic refers to gemstones that are colored by trace elements not part of their chemical composition. Idiochromatic refers to gems colored by elements that are an inherent part of the chemical composition. The interesting thing about garnets is because of their complexity, a lot of them are actually a blend of allochromatic and idiochromatic. Uveravite is an idiochromatic gemstone. It's colored by chromium, which is an essential part of its chemical composition. These little crystals are so small and so lustrous that it just makes the whole piece sparkle. But unfortunately, most crystals that you find of uveravite are not large enough to facet, so you're not gonna really see it in jewelry. Ooh. People are always confusing me with almondine, but I have fewer flaws. Ooh, hot take. Oh gosh, look at that guy. Okay, so anthill garnets, they're a type of pyrope garnet. So they're magnesium aluminum silicates. They are named anthill garnets because as ants create their anthills, they help bring the garnets to the surface. Imagine an ant carrying a one carat gemstone. Like, well, that's actually, <laughs> maybe it would take a couple ants. Yeah, I don't actually, know, maybe don't one know. determined ant. Yeah, so typically you're not gonna see ant hill garnets in very large sizes. Pyrope, so it was named after, think, fire. So pyro, it, ah, that okay. fiery red element that it has. People confuse it with almondine for a couple reasons. One, the reds can be similar. It is chemically similar except for the magnesium in the pyrope replaces the iron in the almondine. Also, chemically, you're not really often going to have a pure pyrope. You're often going to have some almondine and spessartine components to your pyrope garnets. But in this case, this is a very high magnesium content pyrope garnet. Okay. I've tested this one. Have you? Yeah. Pyrope garnet usually has fewer internal, like the clue said, flaws compared to almondine. Most garnets are just combinations of the different species. This is the rhodolite we saw at the beginning. Rhodolite is a great example of a combination of a pyrope and almondine that can have like that near 50-50 split. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about it on like a graph or something, Whoa. in the middle of the both end members, you get things like rhodolite. Right. We need to do a closer look. It's that time of the show. It is that time. Uh, that is a hard one. It is a hard one, but I, th I think I already know which one I want to do. Okay, I'm curious. This guy. No. One of, one of the rarest of the garnets. Are you it's, kidding? It's completely unlike the uh, rest of them. Boring. What do you mean boring? Look at it. It's really cool, and it's totally unlike all the rest of the garnets on the table. I'm going to do a plot twist and not choose a sapphire. I, you want to hand me that almondine? That's this, fair. This is <laughs> That's incredible fair. It, piece. It is hard to compare with the dodecahedral habit, that like matte finish. It has that really rich wine color to it. So let's take a closer look.
So a lot of January babies know that their birthstone is garnet. Mm -hmm. And luckily for you, you're not limited to one color. You have so many different color options and yeah. varieties to choose from. Tell us down in the comments which color, which variety is your favorite. You know that I love Savorite. He loves- I like this guy. He loves the iridescent <laughs> one. We've really only touched the surface here. If you want to learn more about Garnet, go to gemstones.com. We have so much information about Garnet there. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.